Few places on Earth can compare to the vibrance and beauty of a coral reef. Despite making up only 0.1% of the ocean floor, they support 25% of marine fish species, earning them the nickname the rainforests of the sea. However, coral reefs are in a constant state of delicate balance, a balance that is currently being toppled by human impacts. But is there still potential for coral reefs to survive through the 21st century, or will this ecosystem become a thing of the past? Welcome back to another episode of Tipping Points. Before we can understand what's harming coral reefs, we need to understand how they functioned before humanity started stirring the pot. Contrary to how they may look on the outside, corals are living, growing, breathing organisms. However, they could not survive without the help of symbiotic algae known as zooxanthellae. These algae photosynthesize and generate things like oxygen, glucose, amino acids, and fats that the corals use to grow. In return, the corals give the zooxanthellae shelter to live in, and essential minerals like calcium, making it an example of true symbiosis in nature. Now, marine environments are incredibly competitive, and there is a fierce struggle for living space in reefs. One organism that loves to overgrow on coral reefs is known as macroalgae. This algae will cover the surfaces of the coral, blocking out light that the corals need for photosynthesis and killing the reef. However, macroalgae are kept in check by a combination of defenses coming from healthy corals and certain types of fish that spend all day grazing on macroalgae. Together, corals and these algae-eating fish help to create one of the most biodiverse environments on Earth. However, the balance between these organisms and coral reefs has been seriously disrupted in the last few decades. One of the most visually striking examples of coral reef damage is coral bleaching. This is predominantly caused by marine heat waves and acidic waters, where periods of high temperatures or low pH stress the zooxanthellae living in corals. This causes them to produce reactive oxygen species that cause damage to coral tissues. As a result, the corals spit out their zooxanthellae, taking their chances with slow starvation over cell damage. If the heat wave is short or the waters become less acidic, new zooxanthellae will set up shop in the vacant corals and the reef will recover. However, the trend that has been observed over the last few decades is one of longer, more intense heat waves and a slow increase in ocean acidity, both a direct result of increased levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide. These heat waves have caused massive coral bleaching events in the past that coincide with the El Nino patterns of the Pacific Ocean, a multi-year cycle that causes above average temperatures. Here we can see warmer El Nino years depicted in red and cooler La Nina years depicted in blue. Now let's overlay coral bleaching events for the same time frame. As you can see, it's nearly a perfect fit. During previous El Nino years, like in 2016, over 50% of corals were experiencing heat stress as scorching waters practically stewed coral reefs for weeks on end. Also, remember those algae-eating fish from earlier? Well, it turns out that overfishing of species such as parrotfish, damselfish, and surgeonfish stops them from grazing down on macroalgae. This combined with mass bleaching events allow macroalgae to completely take over coral reefs, choking corals and preventing them from ever recovering. These slimy green graveyards of coral skeletons are all but certain if overfishing and rising temperatures continue the way they have been. But have we already crossed the tipping point for Earth's coral reefs? Most estimates place coral reef tipping points somewhere between 1 to 2 degrees Celsius, depending on where they are in the ocean. The IPCC reports that 1.5 degrees of warming could cause 70 to 90% of tropical reefs to disappear, whereas 2 degrees of warming could cause 99% of reefs to die. This means that some coral reef ecosystems have already passed their tipping point, such as the corals in the Caribbean. Between 1977 to 2001, the Caribbean reef lost 80% of its coral cover, meaning recovery for the system is unlikely under future warming predictions. So what can be done to protect the coral reefs before it's too late? The obvious answer is aggressive and immediate emissions reductions to stabilize global CO2 levels. Responsible fishery management and marine sanctuaries for our algae-eating fish will also stop macroalgae from taking over bleached reefs, giving them chances to recover from heat waves. Also, a new practice known as marine cloud brightening, which was covered in a previous video, could play a role in reducing heat stress on corals during particularly hot summers. All these may prove necessary to protect the remaining coral reefs around the planet, stopping these rainforests of the sea from crossing over their tipping point. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Comment your thoughts on the video or even suggest a topic you'd like to see in a future episode. As always, the sources are linked in the description. If you enjoyed this, make sure to like, subscribe, and share to support Planet Zero. I'll see you next time.